Taylor and I run Newport Sport Fishing Charters. We had filmed a show with on the water vertical jigging uh, bluefin and yellowfin south of the Cape and I know there's going to be questions so I'm going to take this time to kind of go over the basic setup and then what we had going on and what we use uh, down there. So as far as that day we had really two rods that came into play. We were using the Jiggin' World Luminous Series rods, and we had a combination of both high pitch and then we had the slow pitch rod. Um, I believe actually Chris was using the slow pitch rod for most of the day. Uh, paired to that, uh, we went with Twin Power uh, 14,000s, and then we would use Seaguar Threadlock in 50 pound, and 80 pound, and then we were using uh, Seaguar Premier uh, in 80 pound. Uh, going with the lighter thread lock kind of helps to keep your jig closer to more of a vertical presentation because it doesn't scope as much because the diameter of the line is thinner. It's plenty strong. And then uh, also with the Premier, it's the same thing. It's just you have 80 pound fluorocarbon, but in a smaller package. So it helps prevent as much, too much scope when you're working a jig. Uh, the jig also being the hero of the day, we were using the Chatter Lures 200 gram uh, jigs, which this one has no hooks. This is my tried and true lucky charm now. It, it survived a whole season of catching fish. So it has been retired, but that was paired with a, uh, I think it had a BKK. They come with BKK Reef Master hooks on it. So, uh, great thing about this setup is if you've never vertical jigged before, it is easy to pick up and it won't break the bank as far as uh, rod and reels go. Um, I prefer the noodle rod. I like the slow pitch. It's a very forgiving bend, but it does have quite a bit of power. Um, once the fish kind of get up past 55 inches, Switching over to the 450 gram high pitch rod gives you a little bit more juice to get them off the bottom. You know, the way we connect it is pretty basic. I don't do anything crazy. Uh, I run the fluorocarbon straight to the hollow core with just doing an FG knot. I mean, you know, sometimes it's fast for me. It's an easy connection to do. Um, then it goes directly to a swivel using a, a spro swivel, one of the bigger ones, uh, with a palmer knot, and then connecting the jigs with heavy split rings, just so that you can change the weight of the jig fairly easy. Other than that, you know, having the 14,000 size twin power helps because the one thing is when you drop a jig down, you know what fish you want to catch, but you don't know what fish you're going to catch. So sometimes if we get into a little bit bigger bluefin, uh, it helps to have a reel that has a little bit more drag. And um, also when we get into some of the yellowfin, it'll help you get that fish in a timely manner to avoid getting sharp, which can happen. We had kind of a couple different techniques that if you watch, when you watch the show, you're gonna see uh, how it took place. I mean, there was one where you could do the Chris Megan, which actually is not named that, but it did work very well where because the sand eels at certain points of the day when they were very tight to the bottom, the tuna fish almost will grub. So by having your jig stationary and just kicking up very little bits of sand, they will eat the jig off the bottom. Now, when the, you could see them on the graph in different positions, we would jig with a little bit different cadence. So, you know, I find that you can, the easiest way to kind of describe it is going to be almost you can spin the rod around the handle of the reel. So you almost don't even have to move the handle. And that is just your basic cadence for working the jig. It kind of, it's hard, but you're envisioning you're walking the dog under the water with this. And you know, you can speed it up, but you almost can just keep that handle steady. 
Now, when it comes to the slow pitch rod, you can actually use the rod to impart a little bit more action, right? Because the tip has a little bit more bounce. So you can almost just kind of half reel it and it'll kind of flip that jig up it kind of keeps it going so there's both i mean there's other ways and techniques and you know you'll kind of figure out which one works for you to get bit but that that seemed to be that day was the two it was either they wanted it actively swimming away from them or almost kind of dead in the mud really worked that day as well when it comes to jigs too, one of the things I'm looking for is, you know, kind of like a match in the size and profile. The reason why I do like uh, the chatter jig in the 200 gram is because the sand deals that we have are about this size, you know, maybe a little bit smaller. So this is just closer to it. But there's certain times where if you have more current or, uh, you know, there's, you might want to go with a heavier jig or maybe you want to stick out if the sand eels are super thick, going with something that's taller or has more of a profile helps you stand out. And then, um, if you're, if you like to get on the tuna grounds early and or fish late, something that glows can really help you too. A lot of people don't talk about this, but anything with like a UV where you can charge the jig and drop it down, that will get you bit, especially in the very parts of fall stong where there's not a lot of light down there. Charging up a jig and having it glow, you will definitely see more bites happening. So with the shorter rod tubes, it has like a lot more of a parabolic bend, which uh, can help in fighting the fish. In fact, here, we'll just give a quick little demonstration. We're gonna get our tuna, Jimmy Fee. He's gonna come over here, grab this line for me, will you? Yep, so he's got, been packing on the winter pound, so he's a good <laughs> medium-sized yellowfin. All right, so pull down on that so we can really see. Now you can see how the rod starts to shut off closer to you, so it, it, you don't put all that much pressure. And the other thing that's important, I guess we can kind of discuss this now too, keep that loaded up, is that, you know, a lot of guys, when you're vertical jigging and fighting the fish, you have to think about your triangle and your angles, right? Keeping your arm straight is going to be how you're gonna put the maximum amount of pressure. If you tend to do this too much, you are going to get lactic acid buildup and you are going to crumble on even a small fish. So you can use your hip and by leaning back, popping your hip out, I mean, you're gonna get extra cranks on that. And that's where your lifting power comes from, is using your back, putting the rod on your hip, you know, that way you can get those extra couple of inches once you have them kind of in that pinwheel. I mean, that's kind of the basic overview of, you know, what we use that day. So I know from doing filming with them, you know, previously there will be questions on gear and that's kind of what we use. I mean, it's not a very complicated system. It, it's simple, but it, it does work very well. So hopefully this year is just as good. We can get out there and get back on them. Thanks guys.